and uh, being motivated is probably not the reality was yes we do have that we we did have a very severe problem of qualified human resources a very weak civil administration uh, judiciary a new uh, parliamentary system new government uh, new defense force new police force all of it which is normal in a country can, that came just out of a, a conflict. The reality of uh, dozens of countries, maybe 50, 60, 70 countries in the world that have been dependent already 50 years, is still some uh, even worse than uh, Timor Leste after 50 years. And, uh, I just mentioned Myanmar, life expectancy 66 point, uh, and Timor Leste for women is 71.6. Or 71.2. Uh, so uh, that part I totally uh, understand. The part of eligibility in terms of the uh, geography is, uh, of course, is uh, uh, completely uh, uh, unacceptable. And uh, there was no question about that. Timor Leste membership in ASEAN required two fundamental. Uh, criteria. One, be in the food, footprint of Southeast Asia. You have footprint. To be a member of a regional organization, you have to belong to the region. Sri Lanka, Bangladesh cannot be member of Southeast of Asia because they are part of South Asia. Uh, one of the most inoperational regional organizations is precisely the South Asia regional group. Uh, because of conflict between Pakistan and India in particular, always uh, blocking any uh, uh, substantive initiative from the, the group. So, to be part of Southeast Asia, you have to be in the footprint of Southeast Asia and it cannot belong to other regional organizations. For instance, Papua New Guinea. Uh, Apply to join ASEAN. As I know, Bangladesh is a in Sri Lanka years ago, but they are not eligible because they're either not part of the region or uh, belong to another regional organization. So Timor Leste is the only one that fit these two uh, criteria. Uh, on the uh, human on the human capacity, yeah, we have made uh, that uh, entirely understandable. The last 10 years we have worked hard. We have uh, sent hundreds of families to study abroad, besides studying in our own country, in our best universities. A scholarship program that was set up by uh, our government, uh, Mr. Shannon Guzman's uh, government at the time, beginning 2007 to 2008, called Human Development, uh, Human Capital Development Fund, about $30 million a year. In one single year, I personally, because I happened to be in Thailand at the time, 100 Timorese arrived in Thailand to go to four best universities in Thailand, including the Asian Institute of Technology. In one go, 100 arrived in the Philippines, all for selected best universities there. Indonesia is a special case because many hundred came anyway already with or without any special program. But Indonesia was also covered by that special program. Selected universities, jointly selected by the government and the, the universities in Indonesia. More than 200 went to um, Australia. Several hundred in Portugal, Brazil. So, in the last 20 years, we have hundreds of people with master's degrees in Timor Leste, many universities around the world, including the United States, China. We have the Timorese who studied, graduated in Chinese universities. Timorese, young Timorese are very good with languages. Six months, one year, enough to study, to understand Mandarin, to join even a medical school in China. Uh, six months, enough to go into a Korean university in South Korea. Six months, one year enough to join a Chinese Navy Academy. We have people who went to the 
no, uh, Japanese Navy Academy. Uh, so we have, we have, uh, you know, we are not yet. We are not Indonesia. We are not Singapore. We are not Malaysia. But uh, we have a so. I believe the who uh, the main one the legitimate objection here concerning human rights is uh, how we persuade them. Uh, many uh, ASEAN missions have been to Timor Leste. They have made effort. They have been there. Uh, with COVID, there were online discussions, and seminars. Uh, right now, there is a mission in uh, Timor Leste, the ASEAN mission. A few days ago, there was a previous one. Uh, been there. Uh, so that's how you persuade by their observation on, in, in the country. And, uh, and then, of course, there is the political, the strategic population. Why uh, Myanmar, Cambodia, and other ASEAN countries uh, not the founders, not the first five, the others. Okay. Why they joined immediately without any preparation? Well, uh, either they are embraced by ASEAN, by Indonesia, by Philippines, by Thailand, or they will be embraced by China. So, ASEAN leaders, why is why, you know, Let's not wait. Let's embrace them. And embracing with uh, bringing in problems, problems of all, uh, you know, all these countries, they came out, some came out of conflict, some still in conflict, but strategic necessity dictated quick uh, decision. Uh, so that's, uh, uh, I believe that we have persuaded uh, uh, some of these uh, individuals that was skeptical and totally understandable. The second one was what, sorry. We want only expanded relationship. We have a great relationship all these years. We need more substantive Indonesian as private sector investment in the Leste. President Jokoyo uh, as a uh, successful uh, Entrepreneur uh, capture the the what is important in the relationship with Timor Leste. Timor Leste, by virtue of our status as an LDC, least developed countries, we have a tariff-free uh, uh, access to European Union market. We have a tariff-free with the United States. There's a list of I think four thousand items on the list that the more less they can export tariff free to the US. And uh, uh, China also we do have a sign of this bill, Australia, New Zealand. But the only thing to uh, set up business uh, manufacturing, uh, some uh, food processing industry, clothing, textile, particularly along the border. That would be President Jokoyo's preference and our preference along the border. Well, uh, we would uh, would create thousands of jobs in the Leste and benefit these Indonesian companies that would export to Europe food. as long as it has a majority Timorese uh, component and the component is uh, workers. Obviously, the whole purpose is to have uh, employment. Uh, so. Uh, uh, that's one way, but uh, there are other areas of uh, Indonesia's uh, uh, support to Timor Leste. I mentioned education, easy access, easy movement of Timorese coming to uh, uh, Indonesia. Uh, Timorese, uh, uh, Indonesia do not pay visa on arrival in Timor Leste. Visa is, uh, you don't pay a cent. Timorese pay $30 to enter Indonesia. And uh, I don't know who negotiated uh, uh, you know. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> and uh, the media say not she. <laughs> uh, President Jokoyo himself was shocked. Who negotiated uh, him? But he, he, I cannot say he promised to change, but he was going to look at it because I don't want to. Uh, 
his lead uh, somewhat position, but he, he was literally uh, shocked. So uh, uh, there is no limit to expanding even less the Indonesia relationship in terms of trade, in terms of investment, uh, student exchange, sport, culture. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, I personally, part of my intent to have a stream of Indonesian visitors coming to uh, Timor Leste in the course of the year. Every year, the same. And uh, I think yeah, to cover everything. Yeah, the Indo, the Indo Pacific. Uh, became a new uh, geographic or strategic uh, concept. It is obviously, it is aimed at China. I do not uh, wish to read too much in uh, the Indo-Pacific partner's uh, mind, uh, but uh, I would say only is that uh, uh, judging from the bad experience of some European countries, NATO with Russia. Uh, <clears throat> better to uh, work with China, and China also has to uh, understand and work with uh, uh, its neighbors. Uh, a superpower. Uh, a country that wished to be a superpower, a legitimate superpower, and China is uh, economic financial superpower, uh, a military superpower, although not yet of the dimension of the United States, but uh, but it is. Well, it has also to sh to uh, to learn from history that uh, empires superpower also melt collapse. Uh, in the face of uh, rejection by its own people, rejection by neighbors, uh, and uh, so it is China that has to, uh, uh, rather than uh, thinking, and I'm not saying they're thinking, but rather than thinking about hard power, uh, better approach this relationship with the neighbors in the world through soft power diplomacy. Yes, it is entitled to a, a navy, a strong army as it wishes to protect the sea routes. So the, becoming a big international trader, why the UK dominated England, dominated the sea, why United States to protect its vast overseas trade uh, empire? So it's natural. When the problem of pirates happened in uh, the Indian Ocean, the first time the Chinese uh, decided to have a presence in the Indian Ocean. So they set up a base in Djibouti uh, to uh, support their navy vessels in the Indian Ocean. But they were completely alone. They were total, totally, uh, uh, they realized you know, they had no way of protecting their uh, uh, thousands of the Chinese ships that go to Africa, Latin America, trade back and forth. and. Uh, uh, so, uh, becoming you know, a, a global power, financial trade and economic power, it, it, we need uh, some uh, uh, global military presence as well. It's the one that has to reassure that everyone that it is not a threat to anyone, that China is actually wants every country in Asia uh, to develop, and that is to benefit of China. China needs a stable uh, Southeast Asia region, needs a stable prosperous Central Asia, uh, it needs a, a stable uh, prosperous Europe, because we look back when uh, uh, in the, in, in the decades of Chinese development, well, it developed thanks to trade deficit with the United States, trade deficit with, uh, with uh, Europe. The only uh, uh, reverse situation was uh, China had deficit with uh, ASEAN. ASEAN exported more to China than imported. 
during those those years. So, uh, uh, and they will have the problem in South China Sea. Uh, uh, it is a situation that China cannot win under international law. It cannot uh, try to reinvent the international law. It cannot. Each of us, also the state, is entitled to territorial waters, continuous zone, and is an exclusive economic zone to undermine, and when it overlaps, we do like, and uh, no more. So uh, China's uh, uh, nine dash line, uh, they drew 1,000 miles just because uh, a thousand years ago some Chinese fisherman was on a rock, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you know, uh, so, uh, but uh, ideally, ideally, because China says its military installation in South China Sea is for protection of fishermen, for weather, uh, etc. Well, uh, that being the case, then why not an agreement with all other claimant states for a joint management of the area? Uh, yes, we some military facilities for uh, rescue and but joint. Maybe look at the Antarctic uh, agreement, you know, when many different powers are there, they no one claim Antarctica, uh, they all sign it are there. Well, look at how we play protect. Uh, of course, uh, China is not going to be impressed with this uh, proposition of mine because uh, unlike the United States, we to the north has Alaska, which it bought from Russia, uh, for $60 million. To the south, it has a, uh, to, uh, to the north, it has Alaska, it has uh, Canada. To the south, it has Mexico. To east and west, it has vast ocean unimpeded. Well, China has a much more narrow, so a superpower with very limited access to the oceans. That's why it's trying to impose a fait accompli in the uh, South China Sea. How to resolve that? Is there any remedy, preferential remedy? No idea. As I said earlier, it can be a case of miscalculation, misfiring, and then all hell uh, break loose. Thank you, Mr. President. It's, it's interesting that uh, this vision, geopolitical vision that understands China's uh, of, uh, feeling of being threatened, of being blocked in South China Sea, and that. At the same time, though, I think the best solution is that we have to have better maritime security cooperation, securing our own seas, so we don't have to rely on either the U.S. or China because these two superpowers are too busy with it, with their own competition with each other. Okay, uh, do we have a second session for Q&A or just one? Okay, one, more. Do one more. Okay. Uh, do we, uh, we have one more uh, session of Q&A. Uh, we have uh, any more students? Uh, one there, uh, and then a uh, lady at the back, and then another one over there. Okay, go ahead. Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you for your uh, travel to our university. I'm a bit come from the student of international relations. Uh, if I am not mistaken, that this is uh, your first visiting uh, to abroad uh, after your, uh, pres your second presidency. So, uh, why, uh, Mr. President, you chose uh, Indonesia as your first agenda, your uh, first national world agenda after you were elected as a president in May for your second presidency, and how? Important is in Indonesia to symbolize the end to your uh, presidency right now, and if and in what aspects? Yeah. Thank you. Um, next question. Thank you. Uh, Your Excellency and distinguished uh, guests and honorable audience, my name is Indira. I'm from the Department of uh, Criminology of this faculty. 
uh, my question is uh, simple. As a novel piece, uh, piece price laureate, um, how does your excellency measure peace? Uh, earlier, you mentioned that lack of organized uh, crime in the last day, and the con uh, lack of ethnic conflict and war uh, were mentioned as measure of peace. However, uh, we cannot deny that there are still class and gender conflicts, uh, both in Timor Leste and sadly in Indonesia as well. Despite current measures, uh, these two problems are still uh, prevalent in both of our countries. But, uh, those are excellency, and the current government of Timor Leste have a working plan to eradicate both class and gender conflicts such as violence against women uh, in Timor Leste. Thank you. Well, uh, in the relation to the first uh, statement question about gender and the class uh, violence, well, uh, I presume you will refer to domestic violence, the violence against women, yes, it is widespread based on, on the data done by many institutions like UNICEF and uh, others. To combat that, uh, already 10 years ago, uh, the parliament passed and the law was promulgated that uh, domestic violence is a uh, public crime. So subjected to courts and not to uh, family resolutions or whatever. And, uh, and uh, Everybody engage in uh, re uh, reducing uh, uh, domestic violence and uh, violence in general, in, whether it is the parliament, the government, civil society, our international partners, very uh, active. Uh, gender inequality, uh, and there are some uh, uh, aspects to, uh, to it that I uh, do not agree much with some of the international uh, studies done. Uh, a, uh, in our parliament, is has one of the highest uh, representation of women. And uh, while some parliaments in the world, uh, democratic, so-called democratic parliaments, have a very little say, the executive is really in charge, our parliament is super active, uh, really have a tremendous input on the budget process, on decision, and there are many women in uh, our national parliament by uh, input 
position of uh, each political party that every third candidate has to be a woman. Then we have uh, members of government, quite a few a prominent uh, women are members of government in the judiciary, in the Supreme Court, uh, Court of Appeal, uh, women. Uh, more and more uh, women entrepreneurs, but still very uh, low. Uh, the weakest part uh, is in the civil administration. You find very few women at the top of the uh, public administration, whatever it is. Uh, but there is not an active, deliberate exclusion of women. Sometimes it just, uh, it just uh, like almost, uh, I say, force of habit. Uh, one calls a meeting, you want to select women. Those who turn up are almost all men. And I, in my office, president, I said, I want absolute gender equality. Well, it has not been easy to realize that because there are too many men that show up. <laughs> and uh, so it is, well, it's... Uh,